Hello everybody, it's SSD Med Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the T77, one of the most recent Tier 8 American heavy tanks that was added to the game along with the Tier 100 pass requirement. If you buy the Ultimate Pass, you're also going to get the CS52 lists, um, but for you catching the video later down the future, I'm sorry you missed out. These are two fantastic tanks, <clears throat> and it sucks that you missed it. It really does. But... They should be up in the store. So, for instance, the CS-52 list should be available for 6,700 gold. And the T-77 that you're looking at right now should be 9,800. Now, the CS-52, let's go ahead and dive right into the statistics here. So, we're looking at base penetration of 232, heat pin, keep in mind, heat rounds. They are not APCR or AP. They are heat, which means if you fire them into destructible items, they will not go past destructible items. AP and APCR are rounds that will go through destructible items, such as little concrete walls, um, some buildings. There's not many in the game that I'd recommend to try and shoot through because most of the time you're not going to be shooting through a building. And just a heads up, if you know the destructible points of buildings and you do have a high explosive loaded, you can knock down an entire building that has a two-piece structure with one shot because of the splash radius. Felt like sharing that today. But up next, 60 millimeters of high explosive penetration. I do not use any high explosives on my T-77 just because of the time it takes to load in the shells. I find that the 32.5 seconds that you're sitting around is just way too much time to be sitting around waiting on that. Now, a top speed of 48, 48 top speed is absolutely fantastic, especially with a power to weight of 16.33. 16.33, you're going to be topping out that 48 top speed a lot. One of the downfalls of the T77 has got to be the reverse speed at 12 kilometers. I find that to be extremely slow. So you get your three shots off. Hopefully you're backing up from... You know, you're side scraping, you're backing up, take your three shots, get them off in about four seconds with the two second interclip reload. It's going to be really nice. And the potential output, massive potential output. Next up, accuracy 0.39. I'm not running many perks to bolster that as well. Um, I only have steady aim, which is the 10%, and that's about it, along with vertical stabilizers. Eight degrees of gun depression is going to allow you to work a ridge line partially. Not too much. The turret armor on this is lacking just a little bit, but not much. Shots per clip. You get three shots with a 40 second reload time base. The view range, this is something that I want to jump into. Try and max out your view range as much as you can. You can get up to 431. And if you're running a premium consumable, I haven't done the math yet and what you can cap out on, but it's definitely above 450 meters. 1,450 hit points, still concealment. Keep in mind, yes, heavy tanks have a moving and stationary concealment rating. Keep that in mind when you are out on the field. So traverse speed on the tracks, 30. That's going to be super nice. And one more important thing, 30 traverse speed on the turret. Now let's go ahead and jump over to tanks GG. Sorry, I changed up a ton of stuff and I'm clicking all the wrong stuff. Hopefully I still got you guys with me. So... DPM of 1,530, and that's, keep in mind, that's on PC with the 38.35 second reload. So don't worry about that. We're not looking at damage. We're not looking at penetration or anything here. What we're looking at here is going to be the armor values and the way it holds up. So one thing I absolutely love about this tank is that the standard rounds get 1,143 velocity, while the premium rounds are actually lacking in velocity. So, okay, I did change up a lot of stuff on my OBS. I've got new key bindings and I'm just learning how to use them right now. So keep in mind if I stop and I'm just like, oh, you guys still with me? Yeah, you're still with me. Don't worry about it. I'm having a brain fart. Ugh. But turret traverse speed on PC, we're looking at 37.55. So keep in mind, heat rounds compared to the APCR. I like to fire off a lot more APCR, but with the way the matchmaking's been going on console, it's a little bit of a struggle. 
Now, against the APCR with the 232 millimeters of penetration inside of tier 8 matchmaking, 232 is a lot of penetration. So, the side armor on this, what I really love about the side armor is that you get 76 millimeters of side armor. And what that 76 millimeters does is allows you to overextend a lot. The center point's going to be popping up, allowing you to penetrate it. So keep in mind, most RB or R1 auto locks will be targeting this flat spot here and targeting out. So don't risk it too much unless you know that they're manually aiming. But keep in mind, the angle you're going to be want to be pulling out at, if I can freaking get the gun on, there we go, got the gun on track, is around 22 degrees to 20 degrees of a angle on your side armor. And even against some tier 10s, you're going to be able to bounce them unless they start loading the heat. Once they start loading the heat, they're going to be able to go through that side armor like it is paper thin if you are up against tier 10s. But against most tier 8s, keep in mind, this does have some of the highest penetration in tier 8 at 299. So this is actually a very good comparison. You're going to see that, yes, the center point is extremely simple to pin, but everything else down low, it's going to be extremely thick. So now let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay here. The T77 overall, the way that I like to play my T77 is probably not the way that you like to play your T77. I like to play it more as a aggressive scout slash brawler role. Now, I know that probably sounds a little bit weird to think about it that way, because you got the 32.5 second reload, you're going to be filling it as soon as you put all three shots into somebody, you're going to feel like you're being left out. But hold with me. You're going to see this match, and then you're going to understand why. So we're up against tier 10s. There's quite a few tier 10s inside this lobby as well. So right off the bat, usually if you guys ever catch me on a live stream and then we're, we're over here on Canis, I like to take the right middle or very far right. But seeing that we're up against tier 10s, I thought, let's try something a little bit different this match. Let's take the left side. Now, the more that I'm playing on every single map, keep in mind, I've been trying to change my playstyles up as much as I can to give you guys the best results that I can possibly give you. That way, whenever we start going over maps and we start showing off other content and going over strategies for maps, you guys will have a large variety and I will have a knowledge base to be able to help you as much as I can. Also, if you catch me over on Twitch and you guys have a question that you want to ask, jump in there, put it in the comments. I will be happy to reply to everyone that wants to do that. Even if you're only there for like three minutes, I will answer your question if I am able to. But this position here on Canis, we are at E3. We're going to be pushing up to D3 here in a second. D3, D4. This one tree. I never noticed it before until... I would say about a week ago, I was playing inside my light tank and I ended up in a tier 10 game and I realized there was a lot of bushes inside this position. So now that we're spotted, we're going to want to try and get all three of our shells out. Keep in mind the standards with their 1,100 shell velocity, just we managed to get two shots in for 672. Along with that, we have not yet taken any damage and keep in mind you guys are going to be loving this gameplay. And just another tip, your premium consumable, a lot of people like to use it for helping out the reload, making sure that they get the reload up just a little bit faster. I've actually been holding off on using my premium consumable. I've been more focused on trying to get it to pop out whenever I'm trying to get the extra view range rather than trying to increase my reload. I've noticed that whenever you bolster your view range, you're gonna be able to light up targets off in the distance that no one else can see. And in my opinion, I think reserving your consumable to help out with the view range is going to be your best bet in making full use of that consumable, depending on the situations that you are in. And also what tanks you're using as well. So I find most Russians with the premium consumable, if you're running them, get the extra little bit of a benefit of 25% overall to the view range cap, and it is going to help you a lot and hopefully increase your guys' win rate or maybe even get you the assist damage that you need. Now, spotting out the low, we're putting one, two, and a third into him. Clipping him out, and along with that, up to 1,200 assist. 
I have no clue how much came off that low, but I do know I put three shots into them and I was very happy. Now, talking about the reverse speed, you feel it really slowing you down. There's a lot of heavy tanks, a lot of medium tanks out there that have got 17, 18, even 20 reverse speed. Uh, the Kurt one, for instance, with its 20 reverse speed, I find that to be an extremely versatile tier 8 heavy tank and that it can handle against tier 10s if played in the right hands and, well, right scenario as well. But the T-77, your top speed that you have, it's, it's all about relocation. So now that I see that I'm undetected, we do not want to go in the front of the Super Conk just because of the reload. We get spotted out by the M103 that was off to our right, or maybe even a proxy spot from the Super Conk. But we're just going to come up, we're just going to auto-lock, put one, two, we're also going to pull up, do another auto-lock, and put one shell into the M103, leaving him on seven hit points left with a 330 low roll. But so far, I can say the T-77 has not been letting me down at all. Even in a tier 10 lobby, we're still stacking up 2,833 along with 1,700 assisted. I find the relocation ability that this tank has, the top speed, the way the armor is put together, the side armor specifically, if people are not used to seeing this, I find with time, the T-77 will become one of the most hated tier 8s in the game. And what I mean by with time, when a new tank comes out, you find that you start to learn the weak spots extremely quick. But here in a couple of months, you're not going to be seeing as many of these. Which means, I would say, four or five months from now, the T-77 is going to be an absolute monster inside the matchmaking, just because people will forget about them. Now, right here, this is something that... I'm going to be sharing again. We're sharing a lot of new things today. Waiting for the E100 to drop down below. So then we're outside of his viewports. So that way we can make the aggressive push coming up from the back. Are we going to be able to get a shot into him? No, we are not. Enemies are on the base with 46 seconds left on the cap. It is a 7 versus 4. We have two tank destroyers over on the right. And that is a T57 heavy along with a Carnivon. Hope I didn't bomb that. I think I did. Ah, oh, well, it's a good day at least. And the two tank destroyers on the right. I wasn't exactly super worried about what I had on my right. I didn't want to pay attention to the team. And a little while ago, I realized I only had two AP rounds left and swapped over to the premiums because I didn't want to just fire off two rounds. And as soon as I got right there, I realized maybe I should have had those two rounds because all I did was fire two rounds. But start in the reload because we're going to be wanting to push up up against this tier 8 Carnivon with a full magazine. I mean, sure, we're going to get there way early and it's going to require us to sit around for a minute, but there's no problem with that. You sit back and you wait. No point in being aggressive. You're an auto loader. Now wait for the last couple seconds. Spam the crap out of your trigger because you just want to get those rounds out. Put three rounds in, shutting down the Carnivon. And securing yourself an absolute beast and recovery. Like, absolute monstrous game in the T-77. So, the T-77, I find this tank to be worth it for a, a tier 100 reward. I, I am a fan of a tier 8 being a reward and not a tier 10. The T-77... If you're newer to the game, this tank is going to be very hard for you to master. For more experienced players, or even for an average player, this tank is going to be absolutely fun. I mean, just the fact that you can pull around a corner and within four seconds get off every single shot inside your magazine for a totaling of over 1,050 to even a high roll number of like 1,180. And so far, my clips have not let me down. I have been averaging above 900 every single three shots that I fire out of this, if I land all three of my shots. Overall, T-77, when you guys get your hands on this tank, just know.
have fun. Seriously. It's got some of the highest penetration values for a tier 8 heavy tank. It's going to be an absolute beast of a tank. You know, this is I'm probably going to pull this out occasionally just because it feels really good to play. Also, during that replay, if you guys noticed, I never took a shot that entire game. The mistakes that the enemies had, maybe it was my positioning, maybe it was the way I was moving around the map, making it extremely hard to hit me, but I never took a single hit. I would say the T-77 with the top speed, just being able to relocate extremely fast and using your surroundings to your advantage works out extremely well inside this tank. And, and before we go, I had some people say, you should start showing off your commander skills and show them off. Well, this is my T-1105 crew. This is actually my crew that is dedicated to uh, American heavy tanks. We're running with Six Sense, Rapid Loading, Born Leader, Steady Aim, along with that Clutch Braking, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic, Rapid Aim, and Off-Road Driving. For me, I find this to be a very well-rounded crew. There is no concealment on this crew at all. I find my Americans, uh, I'm, I'm mostly in brawling matches or I'm playing a little bit more cautiously whenever I'm inside my American tanks. So my crews are a little bit different on them. But if you guys like the video, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I will try my best to get to your comments as much as I can. So until next time, you guys catch me over on Twitch. Seriously, you have no idea how much it helps me out like crap loads i want to be noticed get me noticed <laughs> so yeah until next time you guys have a wonderful day night afternoon whatever time it is for you get out there see you on the battlefield have a great day